Yeah, so the title of the presentation is identifying key interactions between process variables of different material categories using, using mutual information based network inference method. So uh, uh, mostly we, we are uh, analyzing uh, uh, this production process data from the, the, pro, uh, the uh, uh, production process of pl uh, plastic uh, products actually. So in the plastic products, uh, mostly what happened, it is uh, performed by the in injection molding machines where the melted polymer, uh, polymer is injected into mold cavity and then it is packed under uh, pressure and applied cooling uh, until it has uh, solidified enough. Uh, so, uh, uh, and for e different pro uh, this product types, the, there are different molds are being used for, for this kind of production. So during the production process, the most important things are the, the, the material quality. So what type of material you're using and the, the mold design and different processing parameters. They are important and they are to be tuned in, in relation with each other so that the production quality is optimum or, uh, or good quality products we can achieve. But, and in, uh, in, in the real world production process, the pro product quality can, uh, can vary because sometimes it can be very bad or sometimes a bit, and because due to a longer production process or sometimes because of the material characteristics and the, the process parameters are not uh, tuned correctly. In such cases, you can, um, you can have a bad product or even the external effects. Uh, for example, this weather or humidity also affects uh, these, uh, the production of these plastic products. So these qualities, uh, the, the defect can be like, for example, shrinkage in, in plastic production, uh, plastic products, uh, uh, warpage, colors, burn marks, uh, or uh, this color fading or color uh, uh, can be distorted, or the surface texture quality uh, and uh, other aesthetic defects. So, uh, so uh, the uh, various methods and approaches utilizes this, uh, pro optimize this uh, you know, uh, pro parameter settings in order to obtain a, a good quality production. Uh, so, but uh, the most of the many of the studies are uh, are not considering the interdependence of the process variables. So, that how to uh, tune process variable in combination with each other, or how to uh, that which where the process variables are related with each other. So, the, so. Uh, if you uh, so if one do not consider these interdependence then the ultimate outcome is the uh, the uh, the not a uh, uh, optimized production uh, or quality production from the for the uh, for, for our plastic products so here we analyze the interdependence of the process variables where we collect data from uh, uh, different uh, from to 115 products cases and which and for each product presses because we select only specific machine type um, uh, for, means, uh, there will have multiple machines but the the machine version is a specific uh, version so that all these process variables remain same so we had uh, 58 process variables and uh, we uh, in this analysis we also consider the time dependent effect because uh, a production process starts at a time point t1 and ends at a t at a certain point time t and b between them uh, there are different production uh, settings uh, like uh, stepwise production uh, settings so one has to uh, uh, to tune those different pro uh, process parameter different time and uh, the objective of is to identify material specific interdependence of process variables, which material type has a specific uh, relation with each other of process variables. And the second objective is to identify the group of process variables that are steady you know, over the time. Uh, the, the relationship of those process variables are steady over time. And third uh, objective is to find material specific interaction uh, between process variables, which are identified as key features. So in our data set, we have three uh, data sets. We use just uh, production files to identify uh, different uh, tools and materials and uh, machine information and process data is the, uh, the data where the process variables are, uh, are generated during the production process and the ERP data is just to find out which products are there and one can also see other details about the scrap parts and other relevant details. So he, here is the details about our data set. So uh, for example, if you have a, a, a data set uh, for the, uh, which contains R process variables and then the rows are the, uh, defined as the time points and the columns are the features or the process variables. And here we have these product labels. Uh, so we have a, a, a for, for eight material type, uh, this uh, material categories and these are their uh, total frequency. Uh, for uh, so so we have this vector of uh, 58 process variables at different time points uh, uh, for these um, uh, altogether 216 uh, data samples. Uh, 
So here is the just a, a small uh, description about how we generate the network from a data set. Suppose we have a data set D which a certain number of features. So we bootstrap a data and then we bootstrap a data and we test the following hypothesis where we see the whether the mutual information between two process variables is significant or not. So uh, in that case, so for each data case, we uh, use a very stringent criteria to avoid the false positive. We always select uh, from this uh, the significant difference and then we select for each process variable only one significant and the max uh, the connect and the um, uh, significant connection which has the maximum mutual information value. So that's that's how suppose we have an n process variable, so we have always n minus one edges. So we bootstrap data and then we aggregate the data and we create a network here. And here is the overall process uh, about uh, uh, from our data set. So for example, if we have this, uh, if you see horizontal line, these are the time points. Suppose a, a pro process a production process is, uh, starts from T0 to TK. So we split it into K intervals and for each interval we apply this network inference approach, which I have shown previ uh, in previous slide and then we aggregate here. So here aggregation is just that a number of it's, it's the proportion, the number of times an edge is shown uh, between two process variables. So which is here and then uh, in the second step we use these edge as a features here. So the proportion of this as a feature here in the and uh, for example this each material category is labeled with each material. So each production process labeled with material category and their edge their the network edges from here are considered with weights. And then we try to we minimize we see the what is the, the classification er error with respect to the material category. So we repeat it for different splits 5, 10, 15, 50s in order to optimize where it is the minimum. So that interval we select to uh, to uh, identify the aggregated network which shows the uh, steady in connections between uh, process variable which means that those uh, connections are uh, constant over a period of time throughout the production. And the third uh, and the oh, sorry uh, and the fourth the final approach is like when we f find the optimal split interval split we use a one versus other classification model to for the feature selection so here we use a generalized linear model approach so here in this approach uh, for generalized uh, this uh, mutual information approach also uh, we use uh, this uh, because we bootstrap data from this uh, feature uh, feature uh, the edge features data and then we uh, repeat it thousand times and then each when and then we see the the proportion that uh, that for a particular uh, uh, material type how many times uh, that uh, each uh, that uh, feature is shown as a significant feature and then we set as alpha 0.5 if that is uh, more than alpha then we select that as a key feature so and the features are interactions here so here for example these are the results so for uh, when we split it into multiple intervals uh, then we see that for k equal to 20 we have the uh, the minimum log loss error so we select this log loss error uh, however if you see the accuracy is higher in in, uh, in other cases uh, for example accuracy is higher for here for this data set it's much higher, more higher and also per class accuracy is higher for other classes but we consider this log loss for the uh, optimal interval. So from this uh, when we identify this optimal interval then we uh, created an aggregated network uh, which I have shown here this network this aggregated network uh, for, from all where we see this uh, criteria we use this criteria that that edge has to be at least 95 percent times in the in the network. Uh, so with the edge aggregated kit criteria, this is our process variable network and we, we apply this uh, fast greedy uh, algorithm to identify the modules in the network. So the, the, the modularity, uh, this Newman modularity uh, which we used, which optimized that uh, the internal connections and outer, uh, outer connections. So which shows a 0, uh, 0.45 and which is um, uh, quite high. So which shows that it is uh, 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 this structure is a kind of modular structure so modular structure means a set of nodes which are strongly connected with each uh, with each other but uh, are sparsely connected with other um, uh, outside nodes so from here the one a few interesting things like for example the related process variables are grouped together for example hydraulic uh, process uh, pressure value, uh, value or specific injection pressure value and uh, peak um, uh, uh, injection speed they are together so, so for example these are together so which shows that the related process are more influencing each other than other variables. 
works and uh, this uh, then the second analysis when we have identified one versus other uh, uh, other cl classification model and using glm so we see that uh, the the accuracy and log loss errors here uh, so log loss error for different uh, material categories are, are here shown here which is highest for the pa material type and abs material type and uh, the, there is other uh, area under curve and precision and recall other details. So, uh, for, for example, here these some of the this accuracy or results might not be very accurate because of the limitations of this state, the, our data set. Uh, for example, uh, which have, we have don't have this equal sample size or large sample size for uh, for so, some of the, the categories. And also, we have to filter out 18 process variables because uh, you know, some of the process variables have a very uh, you know no variance there or they are uh, mostly uh, not present in some of the, the, uh, the process variables. So uh, th that is uh, for here means we have all together 40 process variable and we have to exclude 18 process variables. So that is uh, these are the limitations of these results. So, for example, uh, we here are the results of the key features. So, for example, each feature, this interaction is a one feature. So now we combine it here. So, which shows that uh, the, uh, the 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 interactions that join the so we join them together and uh, the, uh, the different process variables, which indicates the complexity of the interactions, which must be tuned collectively. For example, this data set sh shows more interaction with each other for more category for PA, and this these are more uh, together. So, which shows that these process variables must be understood student collectively how they function uh, or how they uh, affect each other. So a second example, for example, this for the uh, P where you see the cooling time is, uh, is at the center and it is affecting other process variables. Uh, so these process. So, uh, however, uh, right now uh, for more for the inter interpretation, we are uh, we are um, uh, discussing in, in in our partner uh, in the, the uh, uh, company and domain expert who can interpret those results in order to make it more, much more sense about the results. So the, the the other results is about the overlap of the features. For example, this is a PA category, uh, PA category, and we apply this one versus other class classification, and we select the key features, and then we see that uh, the, how much the other category features are overlap in the, with this category. So in this way, we can also group to, together multiple uh, this product types, which has a stronger overlap or which has a least overlap. And one can separate if uh, this uh, decide our production plan based on the products product type or, uh, or uh, the material quality. So uh, the, the, uh, the so the, now the, the conclusion section is uh, like uh, is uh, as follows. Uh, so from this analysis, we one can uh, be understand better about the the general under underlying relationship between process variables and their predictability, which affect the the quality of the production and vary for different products. So, so for example, here the one uh, thing is, good thing is like we apply the time wise aggregation, because mostly what happened is general approaches are the correlation. Uh, they use a single a single correlation measure and not split based on the time or don't consider the time wise effect because the time wise effect is important because when the production goes for longer time and go through different processes uh, multi multiple steps so there are um, changes in in process parameters over time and sometimes regime change and other effects are, are there and uh, we show uh, from the uh, the time interval uh, optimization, we show that, that the time interval impacts the classification of material category. The, like based on the accuracy of the model, we see that uh, the, we can classify based on this uh, the interaction pattern. And the aggregated network shows this uh, stable interaction uh, of for different material type and module, and also shows modularity. So this can be a kind of a reference network or something or a reference network can be also compared with different scenarios. For example, if you have a high scrap rate or some sometimes we just change certain uh, process variables or some uh, something is not working well, uh, for example, for error propagation analysis. Also, you know, this such uh, this aggregated network is compared uh, with uh, with other scenarios. And uh, this material specific inter interactions also differ significantly for various material categories. We see that there are key features which are not strongly overlapping with each other. So for each product categories, there are different uh, pairs of, in of process variable interactions uh, which are significant. 
and so uh, uh, various uh, other and also the other for important thing is like various process variable interactions which we have identified interactions of various process variable which we have identified uh, are um, uh, identified are related to to the scrap rate and product quality estimation in previous studies for example here hydraulic process uh, pressure or injection pressure injection time injection speed these are the key features and they show a, a, um, a relation a significant mutual which is estimated by uh, by mutual information uh, with other process variables so the identified process variable interactions should not be neglected for molding and optimi optimization regarding product quality and process control in injection molding process so uh, the other the last part of the conclusion is like this analysis to be further uh, taken for domain expert to, to classify most important process parameters and uh, the, the aggregated network should be regarded as a general feature um, uh, features interaction uh, uh, interaction must, and must be maintained to ensure the product quality because uh, but it needs some more evaluation and, uh, and validation yet in in more uh, in a practical scenario because right now it is not yet validated or tested the other important thing is like uh, because these key process variables interactions of different material type can be utilized for, for functional for describing functional description descriptors uh, because these functional descriptors are co called this uh, process fingerprints or described as specific features to be monitored or controlled so the a network can be like a summary a network topology can be summarized into uh, quantified into one into certain values and can be uh, ob ob observed or monitored for, uh, for 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 monitoring process control charts or predicting future effect so we would uh, in future analysis we would use this estimate uh, we, we would perform this uh, product specific interdependencies uh, because right now we have this material category but we don't know because there are other variations also like product shape or product uh, product size material type which can be uh, of uh, various characteristics and also we should uh, we did not consider scrap rate because scrap rate, how the scrap rate varies when we have these different interaction patterns here in the data so so we would like to include these uh, scrap and other details as well and also we would emphasize um, uh, on uh, on developing this cause and effect relationship between process variables uh, so that uh, once we can optimize better about this key process when can I identify key process variables and their interactions for different product types and the uh, and for maintaining a good uh, production quality yeah so this is the last slide so thanks for your attention yeah. so questions if you have any